Next paper will be presented by my esteemed colleague, Dr. Go Miano. It's entitled Laparoscopic Toupee Fundification for Gastroesophageal Reflux, a series of 131 pediatric cases at a single children's hospital. Thank you, Dr. Clifton, members and guests. We have nothing to disclose. We investigated and assessed the mid and long term outcome of laparoscopic toupee fundification performed for the primary surgical repair of gastroesophageal reflux in neurologically impaired children at the single children's hospital. All the patients who underwent anti reflux surgery with a minimum of 12 months follow up were retrospectively reviewed. There were 131 laparoscopic tube fundoplications, mean duration of follow up was 5.7 years. There were four intraoperative complications, including three muscle layer esophageal injury and one full thickness perforation of the stomach. Post operatively, there were one case of dysphagia, four pyloric stenosis, including one required open pyelomyotomy, and seven wound infections. Recurrence was confirmed in four cases at 11, 13, 48, and 61 months post-operatively. Laparoscopic tube fundification should be considering a viable alternative to laparoscopic Nissen, especially in neurologically impaired children, because of reliable outcome and low recurrence. Currently, we are conducting the uh, study comparing the laparoscopic tube versus laparoscopic Nissen, focusing in neurologically normal or neurologically impaired children separately. Thank you. Paper is open to discussion. Dr. Wen. Yeah, and I'm going from Los Angeles. Do you have a PH30 pre and post on this cohort? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's the other difference? Well, uh, you know, preoperatively and postoperatively, pH uh -huh. study. Yeah, I, I think excluding the rap herniation, essentially a failed Nissen complication is a tope, yet they have a lot of symptoms. Can you explain that in terms of your primary tope versus a sort of a failed fundo as a result to a tope? You know, currently, uh, you know, we are conducting the it's going to be a next step for us to, uh, you know, figure out the what is the uh, difference of the recurrence rate between the laparoscopic Nissen and the laparoscopic uh, tube fundification. So, you know, we are not we are not uh, confident enough to uh, uh, the uh, difference definitely, but uh, you know, uh, hopefully, I will, I sure will. Uh, report for the next year. Dr. Wolkan. Go, uh, mm -hmm. During my time as a fellow at Keith, I spent the first year in the late toupee period and the second year in the early Nissen period with Keith. And uh, that second year, I spent a lot of time converting toupees back to the Nissen, uh, which is a very nice laparoscopic operation. You put a couple stitches in, get the infections all done for you. But when you look at a lot of the historical papers, What are you doing differently now with your toupee that you think you've been getting these excellent results? You know, uh, first, uh, first thing, we have to focus on the, you know, neurologically impaired patients and neurologically, neurologically normal patients separately. And uh, in the case of the neurologically impaired patients, the important thing is like uh, to release the uh, pressure at the diaphragm. I mean. You know, the, uh, after the tube population, patients can easily belching. That's an uh, important thing. That's uh, one of the uh, possibility that we believe tube is better. And also, um, there is another possibility that, uh, you know, uh, in the tube multiplication, just uh, uh, the number of the stitches is, you know, larger than uh, uh, laparoscopic Nissen. So, um, at least these two reasons, we believe um, still at least the possibility that the tube might be a better, especially in a neurologically impaired patients. Thank you.
Thank you.